Hey everyone, Kevin Conway here. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the EIDL. That is the Emergency Injury Disaster Loan Program that can give you up to $10,000 of completely free money. It's a grant, it's your money, it doesn't have to be paid back, it's tax-free. If you have a side hustle, you drive for Uber, you make websites, or you're a photographer, or you're anyone who's self-employed in any manner, I'm gonna show you how you can receive up to $10,000, and yes, this is completely real. This this happened in the CARES Act where a lot of people got up to $10,000 and there's some hidden benefits in this new legislation that actually qualifies certain people who normally wouldn't qualify with this EIDL program. We're gonna be talking about that in detail in this video. And for those who don't know, my name is Kevin Conway. I make stimulus news videos and other personal finance videos all the time. So if you wouldn't mind, please liking this video and sharing it with anyone that has questions on the EIDL program or any of the other stimulus matters please do so, it'll spread the word. Liking the video helps push the video out to more people so that more people can get more information. I'm an attorney here in California, so I did study the law and I actually saw what is the case as of right now. So I'm gonna give you the information as we know it today. Now, with that being said, let's jump right into the EIDL program. So here's the basics of the EIDL program. It is a forgivable advance on a loan that you apply for through the SBA, the Small Business Administration. Now, whether or not you wanna get that loan, which the rates are pretty good, they're around 3%, that is completely irrelevant. You don't have to take the loan. All you have to do is apply for the loan and they send you up to $10,000 as an advance on that loan. You could actually not even qualify for the loan and still receive that advance. That is a unique thing here in this legislation. So what you need to know is that this is an amount of money that you can apply for and get, and it's up to $10,000. All you have to do is have some sort of job on the side or be self-employed. Now, basically, here is what we know about it right now. You can get up to $10,000 thousand dollars and how do you qualify for that well to qualify for it you must have a business so we're going to talk about whether it's a sole proprietorship etc i'm going to assume that you're somebody who drives for uber who makes things on etsy who makes websites who's a photographer somebody who basically doesn't have any employees it's just yourself maybe it's you and your spouse but pretty much it's a small business the same rules apply to, to larger businesses but i think for for this crowd for people watching this video it probably is the case that you're somebody with a side hustle so what do you have to do in order to qualify for that well number one this is different than in the CARES Act because number one, you have to be located in a low income community. Now there's a legal definition for what that means. I'm gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. But you need to be uh, located in a low income community. Number two, you need to have suffered an economic loss greater than 30%. And I'm gonna show you the period of time in which you're gonna look for that. It's an eight week period of time. We're gonna talk about that in one second and you cannot employ more than 300 employees, that's probably all of you out there, and it can just be you alone. Again, it could be a sole proprietorship. So a sole proprietorship is the default method in which you actually transact a business. You don't have to file for anything in order to get that sole proprietorship thing. If I go out and I have a lemonade stand and I'm selling lemonade to people, well, I'm a sole proprietorship unless I go and I file and I make an LLC or a corporation. That's basically you out there, you're a sole proprietorship. You can also be any other sort of small business, cooperative, et cetera, so long as it doesn't have more than that statutory maximum of employees. Employees, and it could be basically a private nonprofit, an agricultural cooperative, or and, and there's many other things too. But the key thing is you must be in business uh, in order to get this EID alone. You must have been in business as of January 31st of 2020. So you can't just start a business right now. You can't have just started a business a month or two ago in order to get this EIDL grant. It must have been the case that you had this business in operation before the pandemic got out of control. And lastly, the economic loss that you must have suffered must have been a result of the pandemic and must have been the result of COVID. So you must have experienced some sort of loss as a result of the pandemic. If you hadn't, well, then you don't qualify. But fortunately, this is a pretty liberal application of the word affected. If you are somebody who, for example, drives for Uber, now you can't drive for Uber anymore because, of course, there's not that many people taking Ubers right now because of the fear of contracting the virus. Well, that is clearly impacted by by COVID. If you're a photographer and you're somebody who's shooting uh, you know, different weddings and whatnot, and all of a sudden there's no more weddings happening, well, you're somebody who, again, qualifies. So you can quickly see how basically 
This has affected every part of the economy, and as a result, you're probably able to qualify under this last provision as well. Now let's jump right into what it means by economic loss. Now it's pretty clear. They say that economic loss is defined as, quote, the amount by which the gross receipts of the covered entity, that is you, if you're somebody with a side hustle and a sole proprietor, uh, declined during an eight week period between March 2nd, 2020 of this year and December 17th of 2021. So that's basically from March 2nd onward, relative to a comparable eight week period immediately preceding March 2nd, 2020, or during 2019. So what does that exactly mean? Let's just take the Uber driver, for example. Say you're an Uber driver and you made $10,000. You had a fantastic eight week period from December to January. You made 10 grand from December to January of 2019 through 2020, just you know about a year ago. And say you made $10,000 there. Well, the pandemic happened and you're trying to work and clearly you've been affected by this pandemic and it's April and you live in a low income community. So you just live in some place, which I'm going to talk about what that means, low income community in just a second. You live in one of those places and now all of a sudden you can't drive for Uber or you just have way less success driving for Uber in, say, April through May or May through June or June through July. Any time period that is an eight week period, you just take that and you compare it to any time period before that uh, that stated time period in, in January, and then you compare the two, and if you've lost uh, more than 30%, boom, you qualify $10,000 is what you could receive as an EIDL grant advance on a loan that you apply for. Again, you don't have to get the loan, but that is as simple as it gets, it really is. All you have to do is meet those criteria and boom, you get up to $10,000. And why do I keep saying up to $10,000? Why not just say $10,000? Well, it likely will be the case that you'll get that full $10,000. And the reason is because the SBA did something that Congress didn't want them to do on the last EIDL grant uh, that was put out in March. That is, Congress said, we want people to get $10,000. That's what the legislation says. And the SBA said, no, we're gonna make it $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. Well, those are two different things. Congress had a scuffle, and now it's the case that they're gonna make it so that $10,000 is the amount of money that you can get regardless of your employees, so long as you meet those other criteria. That is, live in a low-income community, have 30% or less income in an eight-week period that compares from now to before the pandemic, et cetera. I know all this can be really confusing and there isn't a lot of clear regulation right now because this bill just passed, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and look forward to new videos where I explain the EIDL and other programs once we have more information, which should be in the next week or two. So what does it mean to have a low income community? This doesn't you know, mean just a subjective thing like, oh, I live in an area that is kind of low income or my neighbors are, you know, low income and I'm low income, whatever. It doesn't really matter what the subjective perception is of low income. There's a statutory definition and here's what it means. A low income community is defined in section 45 DE of the IRS code as follows. The term low income community means any population census tract if the poverty rate for such tract is at least 20%. So if you have poverty rate in your census tract, that's at least 20%, boom, qualified, you live in a low income community. Or in the case of the tract not located within a metropolitan area, say it's in some rural area that's not part of a metro, the median family income for such tract does not exceed 80% of the statewide median family income. Okay, so what does that mean? You live in a rural area in California or New York or Texas or wherever, and you live in that rural area, it's not part of a metro tract. And again, what does it mean to be part of a metropolitan tract? Well, the IRS breaks out your metros. You can look at it online. I'll put a link in the description for that. And you live in that area and say the statewide median income in California is you know, 70 grand and where you live, it's only 40 grand, boom, you qualify there as well. Or in the case that the tract is located within a metropolitan area, the median family income for that tract does not exceed 80% of the greater statewide median income or the metropolitan uh, median family income. So say you are located in that tract, say you're in New York City, for example, and that tract specifically has a much lower uh, family income than New York City, the metro, well then you qualify there as well. The best thing to do really is to apply and actually state where you live and then go from there because the SBA is gonna be the ultimate determiner of whether or not you meet those criteria, but this gives you a good guideline of whether or not you actually qualify. And chances are, 
you have a good chan uh, chance of actually doing so. A lot of people actually meet this criteria. This is gonna be the most stringent criteria of them all. So again, you have a side hustle, you had in any eight week period, a 30% decline in revenue. And then number three, due to the virus, well, boom, you qualified there if you live in a low income community. That's how you can get $10,000. Again, tax free, you can get it, you don't have to apply for the loan. It's an EIDL grant of $10,000. It's not taxable. They went out and actually said that explicitly. Now, there's a few other things worth noting. Businesses that applied for an EIDL even earlier back in March and the CARES Act, well, you know, if they meet the qualifications, they could receive the full $10,000 grant minus any amount already received uh, if their EIDL applications were not approved for that amount back then. So say you got a grant back then of $1,000, but you meet all the criteria right now, well, you can get $10,000 minus what you already received, $1,000, and then boom, you get $9,000 now if you already received money back then. That was a whirlwind, and it took a long time to actually fully understand all that. So if you can give a like to this video and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And I know this is confusing. There's a lot of text and a lot of other things, but I'm trying to do my best to break it down as quickly as possible and as easily as possible. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my very best to answer as many as I can. And of course, if you wanna see other videos, whether they're on personal finance or other stimulus things, be sure to look at my channel. Also, if you're looking for a bonus of $50 uh, to sign up for an account that gives you free ATM access and access to pay your bills and free checks and everything else, look at SoFi Money. I have a link in the description below. It's an account that I've used for many years and I personally recommend. I get asked all the time, what are my favorite bank accounts? This definitely is one of them. It's a great account, it's free to have. I'd highly recommend it. And I get approached all the time to recommend products and I only recommend the products that I personally use and I personally think are good. So be sure to look at that if you need an account. If you don't, well, you can simply ignore it. And with that being said, I'll see you next time.